Hi, Ben here. So it looks like we're going to be working and studying from home uh, for a while. So I thought some DIY desks would be in order. Now these are a lot easier and simpler than our typical DIY projects. Each one of these desks takes about two hours to make and they all involve uh, hairpin legs from our friends at DIYHairpinLegs.com. They're offering a special discount uh, on their raw steel legs and they're basically selling them at their cost. So it's a great opportunity for all of us that are suddenly scrambling to, to figure out how we can adapt to this new normal. We also pick designs that only require a few basic tools. So all these desks can be made with just a circular saw and a drill. Occasionally we use an orbital sander, but hand sanding would work as well. All right, let's get to the builds. Let's start simple. This desk is made out of just plywood and hairpin legs. Now I am gonna use a couple of two by fours and a piece of trim to help me make nice straight cuts. This is pine plywood that's sanded on one side and I'm gonna get two pieces the same size so that I can double them up and make an inch and a half thick tabletop. I'm making the cut with my circular saw and I clamp down a trim board with two 99 cent spring clamps to use as a guide. This technique works really well for long cuts but on shorter cross cuts I normally just draw a line and do it by eye. If you're a beginner though you might want to keep using the straight edge. I'm making a desk that's two feet by four feet but you could really make one any size although I wouldn't go above three feet wide and six feet long. Once you got bigger than that you'd probably need additional reinforcement. I spread some wood glue evenly on the rough side of the plywood and then place the second layer using eight of these 99 cent spring clamps to hold the plywood together. The glue by itself is plenty strong but I want to move fast and not wait for it to completely cure so I'm also going to add in one and one quarter inch long finish screws. This is going to be the underside of the desk and I do want to be careful not to overdrive the screws and have them poke through the top finished surface. If you want to save money on screws though you can just simply take a couple hours and let the glue fully cure. My sister Jessie then put the tabletop up on some saw horses and used an orbital sander with an 80 grit sanding pad to sand the edges nice and flush. She then switched to a 150 grit pad and rounded over the corners so that they wouldn't be too sharp. She finished sanded with 220 grit paper and just eased over the edges by hand. Even though one side is sanded, this is construction grade plywood so there was some discoloration which easily sanded right off. I need to flip the tabletop over to add legs, but I don't want to scratch the nicely sanded top, so I put down some rags to protect it. This is going to be a children's desk, and I'm using 22 inch long hairpin legs, but these hairpin legs come in one inch increments. And we made this handy little chart so that it'll be easy for you to make desks for people of all sizes. One of the things I like about DIY hairpin legs is that they also send you this little kit that comes with the screws and some paste wax and a sponge so that you can finish and seal the raw steel legs. They also have these rubber feet that go underneath the legs if you're worried about scratching your floors. I set the legs in about an inch and a half from the edge and then screwed through the holes in the steel plate to attach them. I then wiped down the legs and applied some paste wax. To finish the plywood, I'm going to use Simple Finish from Maker Brand. This is an oil and wax finish that's really easy to apply. You just lay on a thick coat let it sit for 10 minutes, and then rub out the excess. The first desk is looking good, let's work on some seating. So we're gonna make a bench and a stool much in the same way that we made the desk. We're just gonna glue two layers of plywood together, add some hairpin legs, and this is a children's desk. We're gonna make the bench pretty narrow, so we're gonna have to get creative with how we situate the hairpin legs so that the brackets on them fit together. Now you can buy the legs individually, so if you want to save a little bit of money, you can make three-legged stools with them. But once again, it's just about finding the right way to get them all to fit. Now obviously you could keep the design simple and do all your cuts with a circular saw, but if you want to get fancy and do some curved cuts, a jigsaw will come in handy. And there you have it, a nice, simple, easy-to-make desk that has a bit of a mid-century modern but slightly more industrial kind of feel. Now our next desk has a totally different aesthetic and it's actually even easier to make because we're going to use a pre-cut piece of furniture grade birch veneer plywood from Home Depot. Home Depot sells a lot of different two foot by four foot sheets and after giving it a light sanding, we're going to reinforce it with some two by fours. I'm going to cut the two by fours with a circular saw guided by a speed square to make sure that my cuts are nice and perpendicular. But two by fours are relatively easy to cut with a hand saw. 
just in case you don't have a circular saw. Now only the ends and the outside edges of the 2x4s are going to show, so Jesse only sanded those parts. Our last desk was a bit on the rustic side, so this one we wanted to go with something a little bit more refined. And we're using Varathane wood stain in rows. You just apply it pretty thickly, let it sit for about 3 minutes, and then use a rag to rub out the excess. We had cut the 2x4s to leave about 2 inches between them and the edge of the plywood, and now I just used a pencil to mark the locations before gluing and screwing them to the plywood. I'm using 2 inch long screws, and once again I'm being careful not to screw too deep and go through the surface of the table. With everything screwed and glued in place, we then took the stain again and then finished staining the underside of the tabletop. So the discount code is for the raw steel legs only. So we're gonna paint these using Rust-Oleum product. So we're gonna start by wiping them down with mineral spirits. We're gonna prime them with Rust-Oleum rusty metal primer and then paint them with Rust-Oleum protective enamel in gloss white. Once the paint has fully cured, we then screwed the legs to the 2x4s. Now the stain adds color, but it's not a protective coating, so we sealed the wood with Varathane water-based polyurethane in crystal clear matte. This table has a great aesthetic, it's really inexpensive to make, and because you're getting the plywood pre-cut, there's no material waste. Our next desk is actually more of an art table for two that has an optional center divider to ensure the two creative people working at it don't distract each other. Material wise, we just need one sheet of three quarter inch thick plywood and a couple of two by fours. We're gonna start by ripping a three foot wide strip of plywood and then we're gonna cut that in half to create the top and bottom that are spaced apart by two by fours. Once again, we're just going to use the speed square to make sure we get nice perpendicular cuts on the 2x4s. This is really easy to do with a circular saw, but a hand saw will also do the trick. Now the leftover 1 foot wide strip of plywood we're going to cut into pieces to make a center divider. Now I have a lot of siblings and we were all homeschooled, so I know how distracting it can be to try to do work at a table with one of your brothers or sisters sitting across from you. So I actually highly recommend these dividers. My mom made something similar for us and it really helped us stay focused. Now these 2x4s had taken some abuse because we used them in the staining process for a different project. So we just sanded them with our orbital sander. I also rounded over all the edges of the plywood and since the backside is going to be exposed, I made sure just to remove some of the splinters by giving it a light sanding with 150 grit paper. I don't want the 2x4s to split when I screw them together, so I pre-drilled holes before driving in the screws. The 2x4s are basically going to act as spacers that create storage space in between the two layers of plywood. But they're also important because they're going to give us just a little bit more wood to screw the hairpin legs into. So I laid out the 2x4 structure on the piece of plywood measured to make sure it was in the center, and then made some marks with my pencil so that I could know exactly where it's supposed to go. I then pre-drilled holes through the plywood so that I would know where to put the screws in when I flipped it all over. I looked underneath to make sure I was properly aligned and then drove in the screws. I only pre-drilled holes for the first four screws because once I had those established, I could see where I needed to put in the other ones simply by screwing in a straight line. I lined up the hairpin legs so that the two outside screws will go through the plywood and into the 2x4s. Now there's an additional two holes through the steel bracket that don't align with the 2x4s underneath. So I just switched to 3 quarter inch long screws just to make sure that I don't poke through the plywood. I placed the top piece of plywood and then used these nice looking star head screws which will be exposed to screw through that plywood and into the 2x4s. And I just did this in a nice symmetrical pattern. I like that the star head screws look a little bit like rivets. Stainless steel ones look great, but be careful, they're a lot softer and they're easier to break than steel coated deck screws. I used finished screws to screw the center divider together, and I just used some short pieces of 2x4s to reinforce the connections between the pieces of plywood. For this set, we just used a Varathane water-based polyurethane in crystal clear matte directly onto plywood with no stain or no oil. 
I really like this little art table. It has enough room for two people to color, draw, and even do homework on it. And I really do think the center divider comes in handy. I know these projects are really simple and you probably could have figured them out on your own, but in times like this, sometimes it's good just to see an easy idea that would add a little bit of value. And our next videos are going to take this idea of working at home or studying at home a little bit farther and we're going to start showing some more complicated desks, workstations, and home office solutions. Enjoy your quarantine time, try to make the most of it, and let me know if you make any of these or you find any of this helpful, and be sure to hit me up on Instagram if you, if you do. Alright, take care everybody. Love you. Bye.